If you want to be successful with your customers, you need to make them feel successful. It's all about them achieving awesome. In this Ignite Talk, Kathy Sierra shares some of the secrets for making that happen. Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They've ranged from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate, any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. So if we want to create passionate users, we have to help them get better. So nobody's passionate about things they suck at. And if we can help them have more resolution, richer, deeper, better experiences, we have a chance of getting them passionate. But I know there are a whole bunch of you here that still have your cameras set to automatic program mode, even though you have shutter speed and aperture control. So if we could unlock that door for our users and help them be awesome, what would that mean to them? Well, uh, if you read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, you've seen that 10,000 hours number. It takes 10,000 hours to get really good at something. That's really depressing. So one way we can minimize that is to be practicing all the time. So I'm trying to get really good at horses. That's my desk chair. That's an actual saddle. So I'm practicing. I'm getting in my 10,000 hours while working on the computer. Uh, I know some people are kind of creeped out by that, but it, it's, it's actually awesome. Another way we can help our users to cut down that 10,000 hour time frame is to give them patterns. Experts, people who are awesome at something, have patterns. They use rules. They have an 80-20. Give people what's the one thing you can do to be amazing. Another one is get better gear. Spend the money. And offer better gear and higher end equipment to your users. It just works. So you think that if you get a big monitor and a bunch of displays, you'll be a, a hacker god. If you do that, the problem is when we have better equipment, everyone else who has to pay for it, this is what they see. And someone at Google has to calculate the odds because this slide was in the last person's presentation. But anyway, you'll see more pixels. So give people a way to justify the better gear that you're offering them. Now, motivation is also really important. I mean, I, I, and I think now today's competitive advantage is just making the product that people will actually use. Your treadmill is not in the corner gathering dust because you don't use it. You don't use it because it's in the corner. So, uh, you know, make the right thing easy for people and the wrong thing hard. So now let's look at the anti-patterns, things that we do that, that really help create our users sucking as opposed to getting better. And uh, I don't know why that's a bunny bath, but anyway. This is the single biggest problem that most of us have, is we focus on the tool, not the thing our users want to do with the tool. That's the biggest block to getting people interested and passionate and engaged. And especially in this case, you know, we treat people really well before they buy, and then afterwards we treat them poorly. This is also the reason people don't want to upgrade. If we really want to help people upgrade, which they're going to need to do to go forward, we have to accept that it's a loss for them. It's a hit to their self-esteem every time they upgrade, and we just tell them to get over it. This is the other reason that people don't want to upgrade and move forward, because we write the FAQs and the help and the manuals as though they were intellectually curious and using a tablet PC. But the real reason is because they're consulting help because they are having a horrible experience. But this is not the right answer either. You don't feel awesome because you're not awesome if you master something because a three-year-old could master it. So don't let the ease of use police step in and dumb something down. That's not an answer. This is also a really, really bad solution, which is to hire a social media consultant. And some of my best friends are social media consultants, but it is out of control because it's completely focusing in the wrong direction. We are, well, this is the social media consultant fantasy. The goal is to get users to love us. That's such a ridiculously bad goal. Nobody is awesome because they love you because you're nice. So, you know, someone tweeted uh, that, you know, the holy grail is if your users want to party with you. That's a bad idea. You want your users to party because of you, without you. So put users with other users, not connecting users to the company. This is a fantasy also. This is not going to happen. Great use of social media is to find out what role 
we play in our users' lives and what role our competitors play in our users' lives. Use social media to look for pain and pleasure and those are the things that we can tweak and exploit to help them be awesome. Another thing we can do, well, another anti-pattern is that by trying to be really competitive and focusing on our competitors, we end up being uncompetitive because we end up with things like featureitis. We start building the very things that harm users. The best thing we can do, and this is a great use of social media, look at what the bigger, cooler thing is, the world that our product and our competitors' products exist in, that bigger, cooler thing, that's what people want to kick ass at, not your tool. So blog about that. You know, tweet about that, use social media about that. Uh, in the social marketing world, you hear the word WOM, word of mouth. That's supposed to be the holy grail, but really there's something much better than that that most of us are able to do. And that's WOFO. If your users are so good, you get word of effing obvious. And you all have the chance to do that, thank you. <laughs>